Okay, my name is Kobe Lund, and I am a behavior analyst. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about applied behavior analysis, what it is, and, and how it's used. Uh, and before I start to get into some details, I want to preface uh, this presentation by saying that uh, this isn't intended to be a comprehensive discussion or an all-inclusive uh, presentation of all the things um, that should be included in uh, an ABA program. But I want to talk about some of the general things that are important, some of the uh, characteristics and elements of applied behavior analysis that are crucial, um, and in particular how some of those relate to uh, the treatment of autism. In a general sense, applied behavior analysis is a science of human behavior and it uses research-based methodology to change socially significant behavior. And I'll talk about each of those in more detail, but one of the key elements is that um, positive reinforcement is emphasized uh, to make crucial skills more functional uh, and to make problem behaviors less functional. And again, we'll talk about that in more detail, but these are some key elements. Now, for those of you who are interested, this is a more detailed description of what applied behavior analysis is. Uh, this is from the uh, Behavior Analysis Certification Board's website. Uh, you can find some pretty good information there. Uh, and as you can see, um, this is a much more detailed description of applied behavior analysis. Okay, so one of the uh, key elements is that for each learner or patient or student, uh, the skills that need to be increased and the problem behaviors that need to be decreased uh, have to be specifically identified and carefully measured. And so uh, one of the initial pieces of treatment begins with assessment. We need to um, assess where each learner is when they begin and that usually includes a variety of skills, including social skills, uh, communication, uh, language skills, academic skills, cognitive skills, uh, self-care skills. Um, but the ultimate objective of doing all of this is ultimately to enable as much independence as possible for each learner. Now, to do that, each student or learner needs many deliberate and well-designed and precisely delivered opportunities to learn and practice all these skills. All of the procedures that we use to do this uh, have to be clearly defined and their effectiveness is closely evaluated. Our treatment needs to be very responsive to each learner or each student, each pa uh, patient. And as we go along, we need to make adjustments based on his or her response to that treatment. What we know is that children uh, with autism who receive early and intensive ABA uh, have been shown to make substantial and sustained gains in a number of areas, and those include those that you see, uh, IQ, language, academic performance, social skills, adaptive behaviors. Uh, and in fact, the research and application uh, of behavior analysis has been ongoing since uh, the Kennedy administration. And in fact, it's been the treatment of choice for autism since the first Reagan administration. In fact, there are more than 200 universities uh, in the states that have approved ABA programs uh, and many more even than that internationally. And lastly, there's a package of ABA procedures called the Functional uh, Behavioral Assessment uh, that's already included in uh, federal legislation, um, IDEA. Okay, uh, with that brief uh, overview, I want to mention nine characteristics that are uh, particularly relevant. The first is that uh, using applied behavior analysis, there's an emphasis on functions of behavior. Uh, and this, by the way, includes both um, positive and inappropriate behavior. So um, when a behavior analyst sets out to uh, change some behavior, whether it's increasing positive things that we want uh, children with autism to do more of or inappropriate behaviors that we want them to do less of, 
that begins with an assessment of function. How do these behaviors uh, function? How do they serve this individual? How are they valuable uh, to this person? And then, of course, uh, we want to make positive behaviors more functional uh, and inappropriate behaviors less functional. So there's always an emphasis on functions uh, behavior. Uh, secondly, there's an emphasis on observable and measurable behavior. Um, things like anxiety, uh, overstimulation, nervousness, these are not behaviors. These are certainly things that are real. These happen to us, right? I get anxious or um, one could certainly argue that I get overstimulated, but the only reason that you might know that is based on the things that I do. So my behaviors are what indicate whether I'm feeling anxious or overstimulated, and those behaviors can be observed, right? So it's not inappropriate to um, be anxious. It's not inappropriate or it doesn't interfere with my progress necessarily to feel overstimulated, um, but it is inappropriate if in response to that I get aggressive or I start screaming or tantruming or engaging in some inappropriate behavior. Um, and those are the things that we want to set about changing those observable and measurable behaviors. Now, certainly uh, aspects of treatment might address those constructs like anxiety or overstimulation, but those are certainly not observable, measurable behaviors. The things that I do uh, are my behaviors. Uh, thirdly, there's an emphasis on repeated measures of behavior. So as my behavior changes over time, it doesn't tend to do so linearly, right? I, I may have a good Wednesday and not such a good Thursday and sort of be up again on Friday, but it, it changes like the stock market. It, it would trend in one direction uh, or another, and that tends to be true of behavior change um, in most of us. And if we want to accurately assess the effectiveness of our intervention and if we want to be responsive to that, if we want to make changes uh, to our intervention so that a child can benefit in real time, uh, we need repeated measures to do that. It allows us to provide uh, precision intervention. There's also an emphasis on changing the environment to change behavior. So one of the key elements of behavior analysis is that uh, we do an assessment and intervention related to changing factors in the environment. And of course, many people uh, think about things in the environment like in a classroom where the desks are and what's on the wall and so forth, and, and certainly that's part of the environment. But it's also important to understand that our behavior is part of the environment, right? So that the things that I do in your presence are part of your environment. And I can change the way that I respond to your behavior, uh, and ultimately that can shape on your behavior, and that's changing your environment. In fact, changing the behavior of other children is also changing the environment. Um, actually, uh, changing the behavior of other kids is often one of the best interventions for increasing social behavior uh, in children with autism. And those are all critical to um, our treatment strategies, changing environmental factors to change behavior. It's also important to understand that one of the characteristics of applied behavior analysis is that our methods and rationale and strategies need to be defined precisely. Um, the program itself, uh, the program that's made up of all the strategies and, and uh, accommodations and modifications that I implement for a particular learner, all of those things need to be defined so that other people can do them in the same way, right? So it's the program that's important, not necessarily the people. People need to be interchangeable. If I have a particular learner who's reliant on me to teach him or her, um, that will be a problem over time, right? And if I'm particularly effective teaching this student, then it's something about what I do that works. There's something magic about me that is uh, having these effects with this learner. So it's important that we define all of these things very precisely. And as you see there, that enhances treatment fidelity, or it enhances the accuracy of treatment delivery. Um, and so it's important that we include that. And as I mentioned at the beginning, 
uh, one of the other key elements of behavior analysis is that um, there's an emphasis on socially significant behavior. So certainly statistical significance um, can be included, right? If I have a student who, uh, say, spits 100 times a day and we reduce that to 50, uh, that's a huge statistical difference. Um, but socially, uh, that kid's still spitting 50 times a day. So social significance implies that um, the people who work with that learner, parents and teachers and paraprofessionals and, and other educators and family members need to be able to say, yeah, this is impacting our lives. This makes a big difference. That's social significance. Number seven is that uh, the, the seventh characteristic is that we are, in effect, all accountable for behavior change. And so one of the best ways to think about this is that if an individual isn't changing, right, if we've identified language acquisition or social behavior or a reduction in physical aggression as a target for change, uh, and that behavior isn't changing, then we should assume that we need to change something about our behavior, right? I'm accountable for the progress of my learner. And if he or she uh, isn't making progress over a, a certain amount of time and I can make that decision based on my repeated measures, then I need to change something about my behavior. I need to be accountable uh, for my students' learning. And that leads into number eight. Treatment strategies have to be refined and adjusted based on objective data um, of a student's progress. So in essence, we use those repeated measures to make small adjustments throughout the life of a program for a student. We need to make those uh, adjustments in real time based on those repeated measures. And then lastly, it's important that we address separate and specific excesses and deficits. That's why very comprehensive um, initial assessments and comprehensive treatment programs uh, are necessary throughout. Uh, particularly for students with autism, it's not often the case that you can address one small behavior and everything else will come along. In general, uh, we need to separately and specifically address language and communication skills and social skills and, and behavior problems and academic skills. Um, and there are a lot of pieces that need to go into that. Um, certainly, m it's, that's beyond the scope of, of this uh, brief talk, but all of those need to be addressed separately and specifically. All right, so that's just a very quick nutshell version of some important elements of applied behavior analysis. Um, for those of you who are interested in uh, more information about uh, um, ABA or interested in setting up um, intensive ABA programs, uh, there's certainly a lot more information to get. There are a couple of websites that you can go to that are on your screen now um, where you can get that information.